Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we're getting back on with the Skoda Fabia. So we need to remove the original dashboard as obviously the airbags have blown, the seat belts, reinstall with new and get the power steering working again. Because when, when you have an accident in these cars, when the airbags deploy, the power steering does a thing called a crash safety shut off, which means the electric assisted steering fully gets turned off it's not literally just like clearing a fault code and it'll work again. You have got uh, access, you've got to log into that ECU, so module 44 for the power steering, which I'll show you in the video, the code, how to do it. Also, it is going to be a quite a long video because I don't want to make two videos, one video to remove the dashboard kit and one video to install. So I think it is going to be around about half an hour. So if you are going to watch the complete video, thank you very much. And if I would definitely recommend getting yourself a cup of coffee. Also, if you've not subscribed to the channel, if you can click that subscribe button, it doesn't cost a penny. And also, if you do like today's video, smash that like button as it helps the channel with the YouTube algorithm. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna plug the diagnostics into the car to see what fault codes there is before obviously we start stripping down the car. So the diagnostics we're using today is a genuine launch. So it's an X431 Pro. So it's just going to connect to the car. Obviously it's telling you the car, the VIN number. So we're going to do a full health report. So that will check every module on the car. Right, so that crash shutoff was triggered on the engine, so that's P160900. If you previously seen the video on the ups, you would have seen that had the same error. So when the airbags deploy, it goes into a crash safety mode, which means, you know, when this car is running, on these, the power steering is electric assisted. So when that crash shutoff goes off, you do not have power steering. So obviously once you replaced all the um, airbags, you can then reset to factory settings. Climate control module. I'm guessing because obviously the front condenser is damaged, so it's obviously lost all its gas. There for the front headlights. Obviously your key's got a low battery. Data bus is just through the CAN bus. Obviously airbags. Right, so hopefully once we do this repair, replacing all the airbags, seat belts, and dashboard, all these fault codes should be removed. So as we need to disconnect the battery before we can even start removing airbags, I understand the airbags have gone off, but obviously there is still some airbags that hasn't, obviously the seats and the curtain airbags. But as you can see, this car, you do not put a key in the ignition, which means the steering lock if I disconnect the battery now, I ain't be able to remove the steering lock and I need to turn this wheel halfway round because you've got two little holes on the back which you put a little like a pick or screwdriver just to remove, not remove, just move over the springs and the airbag will come off the steering wheel. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the battery on just for now, just so I can do that. You know, remove the battery, leave it 15 minutes, and I can unplug everything. So I'm just going to quickly remove this airbag. Obviously, I'm not going to unplug it until I remove the battery. So I've got a little pick here. There's two springs. So you've got a spring, metal spring just here and one here. There's not a very good camera angle for me to record doing this. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove this and then I can show you what I've done when this is removed. Right, so that's disconnected. Obviously, the wiring harness hasn't yet. So obviously, I'm going to disconnect the battery. It's not going to do anything anyway because obviously, it's already blown. So as you can see, the picks here, you see this metal spring clip. So that metal spring clip normally will be locked in here. So you press that down, as Pete is demonstrating now, and you've got one both sides. So once you've done that side, turn the steering wheel the opposite way. So you, that's the only place you can gain access, you see, at the top. So yeah, I just thought I'd quickly show you that. Right, so what we're doing now, we're just gonna disconnect this battery. Just remove the terminal cover. These are just a 10 mil socket or spanner. Move that out the way. Now that's removed, I'm just gonna leave it about 15, 20 minutes. So that fully discharges through the systems. Right, so now the battery's disconnected. We've unplugged the actual airbag from the steering wheel. So we're gonna unplug the wiring harness. So on the wiring harness, you've got the main yellow plug. Also, you've got a little black one that goes to the steering controls. So we'll start by removing that one first. The yellow plug, you've got that white clip that will pull towards you, just like that. And that's removed. So the new airbag I've, I've bought does come with the wiring harness, which I'll show you later on in the video. So now I need to undo the bolt to remove the steering wheel, which is an M12 multi-spline. And what I'm gonna show you now, you've got a locating mark on the steering wheel and then that's on the shaft. So you're guaranteed not gonna get the steering wheel on wrong when you re reinstall it. Right, so now that bolt's undone, and obviously I've showed you the locator mark so you can't get the steering wheel on wrong. So carefully remove it. One thing you shouldn't do, a must obviously, is this is the squib, you should not touch this at all or turn because that will um, mess up the steering angle so most people put a bit of tape on this so it doesn't get moved or just to remind themselves do not touch it right so the steering wheel is now removed I'm going to start with the easy parts of removing the dash first so the headlight switch you push in turn to the right and as you can see that just pulls out so now we can get that unplugged it's just one plug as I was just stating, we're gonna start the easy part. So this lower piece here, where you've got the USB and the 12 volt, 12 volt socket. This, literally just get a little pry tool. That just unclips, so I just need to undo the plugs. Then for this heater control, you've got, I'll try and show you now. You've got a T20 Torx, both sides. So one this, one here and one here. So I've now removed the two T20 bolts. So they're Torx T20. This will now just pull forward. And you've just got to unplug these two wires here. So I've just used the trim tool for the to remove the air vent. These are just held in by these metal spring clips. So two on the bottom, two on the top. Well, four on the top, sorry. The reason I've removed that first, obviously the radio is the normal VAG radio keys. There's four. They are hard to see, there is four little holes. So that when you push that in and press it, the reason I've removed it so I can push the radio from behind and the head unit is just two plugs. So once you remove the gator and the two T20 taut screws, all you need to do then is just pull the speedo cluster forward, tilt it and there's one 
plug just here. One second. That power ball clip pushes forward. And that'll just carefully come out. That's the speedo now removed. All right, so now we're gonna get the silver trim on the dashboard removed. So you won't need, you can use a pry tool, but because you can get behind all these edges, it will come off nicely. And you can get your fingers all the way under here. Obviously, if there, if there weren't many gaps, obviously you'd use a pry tool. But obviously, because there's plenty of gaps, you can just use your fingers and it will come off nicely. So now I need to remove this one and then the vent. So with this silver trim, same again, you can get your fingers in these gaps. So literally, just carefully pull on it, get your fingers all in the gaps. And that'll come off all nicely. Obviously no broken tabs, etc. These vents as well, they're not bolted in. On some of the VAG cars, they'll probably have a screw behind here, but these just pull out. Right, so for the air vent, I use the pry tool at the bottom of the vent. And it, as you can see, the spring clips are on the bottom and that will pull out. Also with these switches, as you know, I've already removed the headlight switch. Once I've got my fingers in, that will just plug out and there's one plug. So as you just seen with this button, I could put my fingers behind and push it forward. It's the same with these buttons. You can either go from here or underneath, push it forward, and there's two wiring plugs here. So what we're gonna do now, we're just gonna put the, removing the glove box on time-lapse. It's just held in by a, a fair amount of T20 torque screws, like nearly the whole dashboard kit will be. So you've got some on the top here. You've got one inside at the back. Uh, underneath the dashboard, there's one either side. Right, so now the glove box is now being dropped. You've got the wire here for the, so you can turn the passenger airbag on and off. That's that wire here. And obviously you've got a wire for the and glove box light. And the switch for the light. And the switch for the light. So there's three wires on the glove box. So now the glove box is now removed. We can get to the passenger airbag, which obviously in the dashboard, which is this unit just here and there's the plug for it so i'll be using a pick to pull the orange part of the plug towards me if you got are, are going to do one of these yourself just be very careful on these plugs as they can easily break right so as you know the main screen for the radio is now removed if you can see here there is another hard drive this is for the Multimedia system, so SD cards, I guess the SatNav SD card as well. So same again, two radio keys. And this does pull out and then you just unplug it from behind. There is a fair amount of uh, wires on this one. So you've got a big quad lock and a few separate wires towards the bottom of the unit. So we'll just get that undone now. Before I undo it all, I just thought I'd show you, you can see all. So you've got the main quad lock wiring harness at the top. And then you've got all the separate little ones towards the bottom. So we just want to get all the wiring harness and all the little bits done on the passenger side first. So all these are done for the media player. This is the airbag wiring, like I said earlier on. You just pull the orange clip towards you and this does come off. You just need to be careful. So on the side here, we've got a module. It's not bolted in. So this is just literally just pushed in into this recess here. So we'll put that out the way. We've got a plastic trim to come off here. And normally you'd use a plastic pry tool, but as we've got so many gaps, we can get all our, our hands in. And we can just take it off nice and easy. Right, so now I'm gonna take the upper and lower cowling off. So the rubber gaiter, these actually just push in. One second, as you can see, just literally clips in. So we're getting that out of the way now. Right, so to remove the cowling, you've got one T20 Torx just here. 
So I'll just quickly get that undone now. Now that T20 Torx screws removed, the upper part of the casing will just come off. One second, I'm doing this one-handed. And then it exposes two more screws, so one here and one here. So I'll get them undone now and then both parts will come off. So as you've just seen on the time lapse, so the ignition button, because this don't have a key, there is two wires that plug into it. And also the top cover, you've got that one bolt underneath. If you can see these two parts, where well you've got it both sides, that just clips into the lower piece just here. So we need, we actually need to take the uh, stalks off now. So obviously the dashboard's not going to clear with it still situated so there. As we're removing the stalks now, obviously the squib, we don't want the squib to move. Obviously when, when we've been working on it so far, we've not moved it at all. So we'll just put some tape on just to be on the safe side. To remove the stalks, there is no bolt. So you've got the plastic clip here and here. They lift up and this does pull towards you. But there is a fair few wires you need to unplug. So I'll just get on time lapse. Right, so now we've done the passenger side. Straight onto the driver's side now. Same again, we can push this through. And then we've got a lower trim here, which is covering up a fuse box. Which you, then you've got two torque screws. You've got one here, is a bit dark. One here and one here. Same again, T20 torques. I'll just get that undone. Right, so the headlight level switch. Same again, this car's pretty much push. So just do it carefully, corner to corner. That'll push through. And obviously I can get that unplugged. So there is one more sensor. So in the middle of the dashboard just here, I'm sure that's for the auto headlights. It's just got one plug on it. Nice and easy to get out, just pushes through. So before we get the start removing all the bolts for the dashboard, we're just gonna remo remove the A-post trim. They've got two metal spring clips, so one round about here, one here, and on the lower part, it just slides off. They are very tight, so if you are gonna do this, just be careful. So now we're ready to remove the dashboard. So the dashboard is just held in by 10 T20 Torx screws. I'm just gonna show you where they are, because we're gonna put on time lapse to remove it. So the first one is at the top here. There's one just here. There's one behind here. You've got one just under here. One that goes here. These two already removed when we removed the dash, uh, not the dashboard, the glove box. You've got one in the middle when the camera focuses. One where the speedo cluster goes. Two in the same location underneath the driver's side. So one under here one under here, and the same on the end. So we're gonna get on time lapse now. One last thing I forgot to mention, the airbag bracket, you've got two bolts. You've got one here and one here. I've got to undo them now, then I can undo all the dashboard bolts, and hopefully this will just lift out. So there we have it. The dashboard's finally now removed. And I think, to be honest, that was the most easiest dashboard I've done on a car to date. As you haven't even got to take the centre console out. I was quite I was quite shocked on that, because most cars you've got to take the centre console out, because there'll probably be like two more hidden bolts down here, for example. But yeah, it is that dash you know, it amazes me how dashboards are just held in, for example, at ten ten of these T twenty torque screws. And obviously you do have a couple of 10 mil bolts for the airbag. So what we're going to be doing now, I need, obviously, like you know from the first video, I've got a brand new genuine dashboard. I've got the two replacement airbags, so the one for the steering wheel and one for the dashboard. So I'm going to get the dashboard airbag installed on the 
panel stand and I'll be putting the dashboard, installing the dashboard on time lapse. As you've just seen me remove it, it's the same procedure to put it back in. Right, so just before I install the dashboard airbag, I just thought I'd show you the airbags I've now received. So here's the steering wheel airbag. It even comes with the wiring harness. And this is the passenger airbag that bolts up underneath the dashboard. So obviously, like you know, when these deploy, it tears a hole through the dashboard. These are held in by four bolts to either end. Obviously, you've got your wiring harness plug that plugs into the airbag. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get this bolted up to the brand new dashboard. You can't get no fresher than a brand new genuine dashboard. It still amazes me that it was cheaper for me to buy a brand new one from the dealer than getting a second hand dashboard. Right, so what I'm about to do now, I'm about to install the passenger airbag. It's easy for me to do it off the car. So I've got some brand new airbag brackets. So how these get installed, literally put it at an angle. Just try and do this one handed, one second. It goes through there. The airbag goes then on top and then it bolts straight through to hold it down. So that's now the airbag all installed with the retaining brackets. So I'm going to get on time lapse now because the dashboard is now ready to install onto the car. So now the dashboard and the two airbags are installed. We're going to get onto the seat belts. So these are my seat belts that I sent off to the airbag team to get professionally repaired. After speaking to Dean, who's got the Save and Salvage YouTube channel, he had his seat belts done by them for his Mark 7 Golf GTI. So as you can see, the airbag team, I'm just covering up my address, but that's the price for two seat belts to get refurbished. So 156 is for two seat belts and delivered. I have them done just one. But yeah, that's the seat belt. So we've got Pete's just doing the left seat belt now. We've got the driver's seat belt all in now, torqued up. There is three bolts on these, so an M10 just about where my finger is. Another M10 multi-spline bolt for the seat belt body to the car. And then one that goes through the carpet for the seat belt buckle itself. As you can see as well, the wires all connected up. So we're just gonna get these done now, put the black trims on, and it'll be time for diagnostics. Right, so now everything is now put back together in the interior. It is time to get the battery connected. Let's see if anything explodes. No, I'm only joking, so I'm gonna just connect the battery up now. Right, battery's now connected, just before I put diagnostics on it. I just wanna make sure the car does start, as you know, the ignition on this. It, you don't put a key in it. Where the key would go, you've just got a start button. So ignition's come on. It will still say airbag error because obviously that store codes into the airbag module. All the controls are working. All the buttons are working. I won't do the horn because Pete's son is asleep. All right, fingers crossed. She starts up. So now we know all that's done. Let's get diagnostics plug onto it. All right, so we've plugged the dongle for the diagnostics into the car. Got the screen on here now. Same again, the launch X431 Pro. Click diagnostics. Still got fuel light. 
<laughs> Alright, so if we do a health report, that'll be a full... So what's going to happen, so when the airbags do clear and the seat belts will still have the crush uh, shut off, the, I'm sure it's P16900, because obviously I've got to go into module 44, use a passcode to unlock the module, and then set it to basic settings, so then the steering lock, you need to learn that, so left and right, so then that code will delete, then you'll have electric power steering again. But I'll show you everything, even the code to log into module 44. Right, let's try and clear all these. There we have it, airbags, no faults. Okay, so all that is left is the crash shut off. And data bus, I'm just gonna see what. Same again for the crash shut off. So I'm going to do, I'll show you that now. And what we'll do as well, we'll put the ignition on and off. Start the car. Clutching, sorry. So now all the lights have gone off. Obviously, apart from the fuel light. And the steering. Because obviously, because it's still in the crash safety mode for the steering... Like I was just saying, I'll have to physically go into that and unlock it with a code. So as you can see, the codes are still there. I'm just going to show you quickly. So I'm going to start the car. If you look, literally, I have no power steering at all because of that crush lock off. So I'm going to show you how to do it now. Right, so what we've got to do now, we need to go into module 44 for the power steering. So click enter. I need to log into the module to gain access to do um, adaptions. So access permission. Not all diagnostics will tell you, but that is the login code. 17580. Login successful. So what I'm going to be doing now, I'm going to basic settings, reset to factory settings, OK. Click adjust. Finish correctly. You will get an error. Not this one, one second. That's disconnected. So you'll get the tyre pressure monitor system error. And it will come up with traction control error. Because so obviously this needs to um, need to learn the lock stops and the traction control. Right, so as you can see now, power steering is working as it should now. The only fault codes, well, no fault codes. You've got the warning triangle, which is because obviously it is overdue a service now by 26 days. Obviously once the car's complete and finished, we'll be giving it a good old full service. Uh, so, earlier on I was mentioning about the, you know, once the airbags goes off, it, it makes the power steering go into a crash shutoff mode, which obviously fault code P160900. So basically what you need to do, I'll just show you as well, the fault codes now on the car is for the driver's headlight as it's not plugged in. So that's the only fault codes on the car now. So to do the power steering, you need to go into module 44. And you need to log in. So access permission. 
I think I did state earlier on, some diagnostics tell you, some do not. The code is 17580. So 17580. I'm not gonna do this again. I'm just gonna show you what you need to do. So you go into basic settings. You need to reset these two. Once they've reset, you're then gonna get the P160900 fault code will delete and clear but you're gonna get three new fault codes. So one of the fault codes will be the steering lock for the left, no calibration, so which means you need to calibrate it. That's just simply going all the way to the left, holding it for about 30 seconds. You'll get another fault code, steering lock to the right, same again, all the way to the right, hold it for 30 seconds. You might have to do it a few times, but that, that will clear. But the actual, then you the third fault code will be steering angle sensor, no basic settings. You actually need to click on to this one. I'm not gonna do it now, cause it's all done. But yeah, you need to um, press adjust. Well, press stop first actually on this one, then press adjust and you'll be able to calibrate it. So I think I stated this on the Volkswagen up rebuild I did for the airbag system so many companies saying you can't do it with normal diagnostics you need um i can't think of the name now what the deal uses so as i was just saying on the volkswagen up rebuild video i did same problem That's, that was a 69 plate car uh, airbags gone off and the power steering got turned off i was reading about because i ain't done many of the newer ones where they've, the actual power steering stopped working everyone said online you either got to go to main dealer or a specialist who use Odis Diagnostics or a few companies on eBay, 200 pound or 250, you gotta get the car to them. Yeah, we just done it with launch. So yeah, the interior is, obviously it's gonna need a clean once the car's finished, but the whole interior now is all finished and everything working as it should. So yeah, me and Pete just, next job on the car will be tearing down the front end so that's the interior completely finished now obviously it will need a hoover when once we get the car finished and obviously a full detail inside and outside but as you've seen the whole dashboard kit now is all installed no fault codes working correctly and the main thing we've got the power steering working again so i appreciate everyone that's watched today's video me and pete enjoyed it i really do enjoy doing dashboard kits myself and yeah, I appreciate it. it was a long video. So if you, have, if you have watched till the end, thank you very much. And also the next video on the Fabio, we're gonna be tearing down the front end to see if there's any more hidden damage. Obviously, if you've seen the first video on the Fabio, the reveal video, you'll have seen we've got majority of all the parts now when it, anyway, uh, pretty much all brand new from TPS. So that's genuine Skoda parts. So like I said, thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope you did like it. If you haven't subscribed, press that subscribe button. And if you did like today's video, smash that like button. Thank you again. See you in the next one.